Street Chronicles presents Trust Nobody, a novel by Stephen Love, narrated by Mr. Gate. One, Green Bay Correctional. Terry Davis sat on his bunk with less than 24 hours to go till his release. Usually, he would pound the bench in the gym to add muscle to the massive chest he spent over four years building. But today, he just wanted to sit back, relax, and think about his next move. Now that he had eyes and ears in the game, things would be a lot different when he got out. The streets of Milwaukee had become full of jackers and snitches. Not too many real players left. One thing was for sure, and two things were for certain. The man known as Bricks was about to be home. Hey, Bricks, his neighbor yelled from the next cell. Jamal Jordan was from Chicago, doing a life bid for a body he and his boys laid down. Bricks liked Jamal. He was true to what he stood for. Jamal could have rolled over on his crew, but he didn't. He just took the weight and time himself. Yo, bruh, what it do, my dog? So you gonna tap some pussy for me tomorrow night or what, my nigga? Jamal asked, happy that his four-year neighbor was finally hitting the streets. Is Orville's last name Redenbacher? Bricks laughed. For sure, I'll be thinking about you while I'm all in it. But you know I'm gonna make your books look right, too. I told you I got you and I'm a man of my word. Bricks promised to look out for a few of the fellas when he got home. A man of his word he was, so that's what he was going to do. It would be nothing to make a few cats books fat once he got home. Bricks flexed his biceps as he paced his cell. He took off his t-shirt and hit the floor for a few sets. He'd make it to a hundred on his first rep before feeling the burn began to tear through his muscle tissue. That didn't stop him. The more he thought about what he was going to do when he got home the more he welcomed the burn. He shouted as he finished the second set and went right back down for the third. He couldn't wait to get to his storage bin to get his personal items. Aisha claimed she would be waiting on him to touch down, but he wanted to surprise her. He told her that he'd gotten a 30-day defer from the parole board and wouldn't be home until this time next month. Aisha was his baby mama. They had a five-year-old little girl who he loved more than anything in the world. Aisha had somewhat taken care of business while he was gone. He smiled, thinking about those big Mississippi calves that she had waiting on him. It had been four years since he had lain in anything, and in less than 24 hours, he was about to release a whole lot of pent-up frustration. Yo, dog, you working out on your last day? Jamal called over. I thought we'd get a game of chess in before you rolled out. Playing chess was what they did with each other for the last three years. Jamal was once the king of the yelling chess game, but once Bricks figured out the game mathematically, he was the man. Each person had to build their own chess board, chess pieces, and number the board. When a player moves, he yells out the number that piece is moving to, and his opponent moves their own and the opponent's piece to keep up with the game. Yo, you ain't said nothing but a word. Let me rep out this last hundred and take a quick hot bath. Then we can get at it, Bricks replied. Yeah, I want to spank that ass before you hit it, you know? Put something on your mind while you're out there getting that paper, young dog. Bricks finished his last rep and washed up in the sink. It was a funny thing. He knew he wouldn't miss the joint, not by a long shot. He'd eaten too much Hormel chili and boiled too many ramen noodles to miss the vacation of hell. He would miss a few of the homies he bonded with, though. That was a given. Say, old man, you ready to get this ass whooping I got for you? Bricks asked. You gotta bring some ass to get some ass. Just don't let them push-ups be the reason you slack on the moves, little nigga. Bricks laughed at Jamal's comeback. Jamal wasn't that much older than Bricks, 
but they nicknamed him Old Man because alopecia had caused baldness to wreck the front of his dome. Another thing Bricks admired was that Jamal had mad game and didn't take shit from nobody. Well, all I gotta say is set your board up then. It's on. Bricks took White since White moved first. Black was more so the defense. I got one thing to say before I start beating that ass, and you can take that to the bank, young dog, Jamal said, setting up his board. Oh yeah? What's that, ballhead? Always remember this. At the end of the game, the king and the pawn go back in the same box. That was some deep shit his homeboy just spit. But Bricks knew Jamal's comment was deeper than just a rook or a bishop. It was real life. He shook his head and made his first move. He pushed a pawn out two spaces, trying the weak attack on the F7 formation. 